Hello, I'm Ollie from the Pacific Museum of Earth, and today we're going to be drawing at the skull of a hominid from the PME's very own Hominid Hall. To follow along at home, download Activity 1 of the Hominid Activities linked at pme.ubc.ca slash school replicas. For this activity, you can pick any of the school replicas we have at the museum, but for today, I'll be drawing in the skull of Homo erectus. We will start, as always, by identifying the shapes in the skulls of these individuals, but with a slight twist. I've also included a human skull model on this page that I've also taken a look at the shapes of, and here we begin to see how our similar our two skulls are. There are differences, though, between us and this ancient ancestor, the first of which is this very distinct brow ridge of the Homo erectus skull, which I know I'll want to include when I get to drawing it. Drawing atop these skulls helps me notice major forms and how they fit together. I'll also have a human anatomy reference book with me uh, while I do this drawing since the bones of the skull are so similar, and I recommend you do the same if possible. A human, and really any hominid skull, is made up of two major forms when you're drawing. Uh, a circle for the top of the skull, and a rectangle for where you go down towards the, the mandible, the jaw. Um, and these are a really great place to start when drawing either. I'm going to begin with a really rough sketch as always, not focusing on getting things right at all, just looking at my reference image and roughing in major forms. You'll see me moving around elements and stretching them to make sure my proportions are right as I move into a second less rough sketch. If you're not working digitally and working by uh, pencil, this is why you should start by sketching light so you can erase and move things around. Hominids are definitely an era, area of evolutionary history that I'm personally less familiar with, despite being one, so this drawing was my first foray into our family tree. As per usual, I'm not an expert, but I hope you and I can learn together as we work through this drawing. Homo erectus was our first truly bipedal hominid ancestor, which is of course where they get their name. Uh, being bipedal, as well as having similar proportions and body plans to us, allowed Erectus to walk and run comfortably for long distances, which are a good thing, since Homo erectus is perhaps the well most well-traveled early hominid. The remains are widespread, and they are believed to be the first hominid to leave Africa and travel to parts of Asia. As well as being well-traveled, Erectus was also long-lived on our planet. The species of hominid persisted for 1.5 million years, nine times longer than our own species. In our drawing, once I have a rough sketch I'm happy with, I'll start doing my final line work. I like to keep my line work pretty loose, and for this drawing I used, wanted to use a pretty thick pen to give a more graphic look, but you can take whatever approach you want. Use a pencil to carefully shade and sketch to create a hyper-realistic skull. Use brightly colored pens to create something unique and eye-catching. Take your pick. Homo erectus is often, also often seen as the hominid ancestor who learned to use fire to their advantage for the first time, though this is still a subject of much research. The harnessing of fire might have allowed our ancestors to keep awake past sunset, allowing for more social time, survive in colder climates, keep predators away, allowing for sleeping on the ground rather than in trees, uh, the cooking of food to make chewing and digesting easier and more energy efficient, as well as many other abilities that help their family line grow and develop. Erectus is also well known for their use and creation of stone hand axes, uh, tool making long being a defining characteristic of hominids before we realize that primates as well as other species engage in similar tool creation. My final step is going to be coloring my skull, and I wanted to use a sort of aged and weathered color palette as if this skull, despite, it, despite its completeness, was pulled out of the ground and put in a museum display. I'm going to start with a mid-tone shade, a sort of light yellowy brown. Next, I'll go in with some darker, cooler tones. Uh, using cool shades makes these areas look recessed, and thus allows us to add contours to the face, such as the eye sockets and the spaces between the mandible and maxilla. Um, because cool tones push uh, objects back in space, whereas warm tones make them look closer to us. I will keep going in with darker and darker values until I'm happy with how the shadows are popping. The
The human skull has been a common subject for painters throughout history, uh, for training and understanding human anatomy or symbolizing what is captured in the Latin phrase memento mori, or remember you too shall die. Drawing this homo erectus skull makes me think a bit on this uh, art history since art and science have always been closely linked and how they're connected. This is the skull of an ancestor long since past, uh, from a time when many different branches of our family tr tree existed at once. It's only been a very small part of our evolutionary history where there's only been one hominid species, Homo sapiens. Other genuses, such as Canis, have many, many species, from wolves to coyotes to jackals in the modern day. Yet, we're alone on this planet, but that wasn't always the case. Our family tree has not been a linear march forward, but a branching and complicated web of species who have lived and gone extinct. So this Homo erectus skull tells a similar story to the skulls of old oil paintings, Memento Mori. Remember that we too will someday go extinct, but our family tree is long and fascinating and there's still so much to learn about it. I'll finish by adding highlights and areas that I imagine the light would hit, using my reference images to help. It's useful to remember that the skull is a three-dimensional object, so we use our highlighting and shading to show us how the light would bounce off and shape these objects that are in front of us. We can think of the skull almost as like a, a ball because it's quite round in areas and think about how light would hit a ball. I'm going to add some final touches to this skull, and I'll be back with our final product. So here is our finished Homo erectus skull. This has been an experiment for me into both drawing and learning about early hominids, and I hope you found it just as exciting as I have. If you draw this skull or another featured in the hom PMA's Hominid Hall, post it on social media and don't forget to tag us. That's all for now, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.